My name is David Patterson. I'm an infectious diseases physician and I direct the Advanced ID Clinical Trials Network in Singapore. We know sepsis is a serious condition. We know it is potentially lethal. But what is sepsis? Sepsis really occurs when the body's immune response to a serious infection goes wrong. The body ends up causing such a significant immune response that we get damage to tissues and end organs. Ricard, it would be really interesting to hear your perspective as a physician in an intensive care unit. I am Ricard Ferrer. I am intensivist. I am the head of the intensive care department in uh, Vallebron University Hospital in Barcelona, Spain. Sepsis may appear in every ward of the hospital. We have to train specialists in every ward of the hospital to um, every recognition uh, of sepsis. And then also we can use uh, other tools like early warning scores, e-alerts, Sometimes in the, in the recent years, ELFs go in with artificial intelligence algorithms that are uh, auto-learning and, and helping us to identify in sepsis faster. But um, also important when we have this patient at risk considered that may have sepsis, also to have uh, rapid, um, rapid response teams in place to treat this, this patient as soon as possible. In clinical practice, we have several tools for confirming or for helping us uh, in uh, saying that this patient has sepsis because of bacterial infection. The first one are biomarkers, uh, biomarkers of systemic inflammation. We can use PCT uh, or CRP that are biomarkers that ha can help us in situations of uncertainty when we are uncertain that this is a bacterial infection can help to us to understand. They are in a specific but they can uh, add it to our clinical judgment. They can increase our possibility to detect bacterial infection. In the recent years, we have incorporated also rapid diagnostic tests or molecular microbiological tests. Those are rapid tests. They provide the results in few hours, uh, in less than six hours. And those are very important because they are helping to provide, um, to, to reduce the time to appropriate therapy in some cases, but also to go, uh, to de-escalate and go for the directed therapy faster than we did in the past. And also we have the traditional cultures that are still mandatory and uh, are helping us at the end to confirm the final diagnosis and to have information about the phenotype of the microorganism that is producing this specific infection. So please, David, can you comment on this topic? Frequently, stewardship programs and infectious diseases doctors and pharmacists want to restrict the use of antibiotics, and sometimes that can go overboard. On the other hand, intensive care unit doctors want to get in there quickly with aggressive therapy, including aggressive use of antibiotics as early as possible, and sometimes that doesn't gel with how infectious diseases or antibiotic stewardship programs see the world. I think the solution to this problem is really to consider very carefully what is the risk of an antibiotic resistant organism for any given patient. And this way, if we can clearly define the risk, we can more clearly define the appropriateness of antibiotic choices for that particular patient with sepsis. Anna, I'm taking this role, you know, as a, a doctor in Asia. How do you see things coming from Brazil? Hi, my name is Anna Gales. I'm an ID physician. I am professor at Escola Paulista de Medicina, and I work in the southeast of Brazil. I work in São Paulo. In the recent years, we have observed an important increase in the carbapenem resistance rates, especially among enterobacterialis. This, the main mechanism of carbapenem resistance among these pathogens is the production of carbapenemase. KPC is used, is used to be the most frequent carbapenemase in the Americas, 
as OXA48 was in the, in, in the European region, especially in the Mediterranean area. And we have a met, metal beta lactamase MBLs in the Asian region. After the pandemic, we have observed an important increase in the MBLs uh, in many regions of the world, often sometimes accompanied by a double production of carbapenemase. Many factors drive the emergence and the spread of multidrug resistant gram negative infections. Among them, overuse and misuse of antibiotics, the hospital's environment and hospital's hotspots for antibiotic resistant isolates, global travel and trade, environmental factors, many other factors are important driving this change, it's especially increasing the number of MPL infections. But what's really important to think about when you are working with septic patients and patients with sept shock, it's really important to make a diagnosis as early as possible. Knowing the local epidemiology of circulating pathogens and their resistance mechanisms is crucial for early identification and diagnosis. It's very important for empirical ter therapy. If you understand which pathogens are prevalent in your area, it will help you to consider these pathogens when diagnosing patients. I would like to hear the perspectives from David from Singapore. One of the big questions is who should be making the decisions about starting antibiotics and who should be making the decisions about antibiotic de-escalation. Unfortunately, the reality is often the person who is making the decision about starting antibiotics is actually the most junior member of our medical staff. This is because sepsis often occurs out of hours on weekends. And in that situation, we've got to create very clear guidance to our junior doctors about what are the most appropriate pathways for treating a patient with sepsis, when should they escalate and raise the alarm to more senior members of staff that there's a patient with sepsis. And I think by supporting our junior doctors, we're going to improve the outcome of our patients with sepsis. Then who makes the decision about antibiotic de-escalation or continuation of therapy? Clearly that needs to be a team decision. It's a decision that needs to be made with infectious diseases advice, clinical microbiology, pharmacy, intensive care unit specialists, so that we can come up with the right answer for our patients. And I think in this way, we can really improve the outcome of patients with sepsis.